Alright guys, this is Paul with VHSCollector.com and I have something special that we're doing today. I have my good friend Steve with us. Um, I've known Steve Steve for like 10 years. I met him at 112 Video Scanning VHS Covers. So Paul's like my brother. Yeah, so we've known each other for a long time. Unfortunately, he lives up in New York and I'm in PA, but I'm visiting a family, including Steve of course. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity because Steve is a massive movie collector and someday maybe we'll do a big video on his collection but uh, it might be an hour or so long video it's huge but anyway as you can see we have thousands of laser discs behind us and so I thought it would be fun to do a laser disc video because I myself only own one laser disc so he's gonna show us some really awesome lasers that are not available on a DVD or any other digital format um, at least uh, DVD or blu-ray domestically yeah, domestically. I mean, some of them might be available in other territories. So you want to show us what you got? Yeah, well, we'll start with the most famous one. Song of the South, a Disney classic. This is a Japanese import. It's pan and scan, but it's not so bad. It's the only way you can really get to see this movie. Well, there are bootlegs. What, there was a foreign release, and so a lot of the bootlegs, I think, in the United States are from that foreign release, Well, I, think. I honestly, all the bootlegs that I've seen were transfers from this. Oh, okay. Even the foreign ones. The one from France that's supposedly a legit one. Is, oh, the France one. That's what I was thinking of. It's yeah. a copy of this. Okay. So, yeah, so I have this. This is in great shape. Uh, the cover looks like it had a little wear on it, but it's the disc itself is in great shape. So, great movie. I don't know why. I mean, I understand why, but... So I, it was only a, f a release officially on home video in, was this Japan? Yeah. Yeah, there is no American release for this that I'm ever aware of. But uh, no Blu-ray, no DVD, no Disney Plus, and no time soon, basically. So, just kind of cool to have. That's like a... You know, so, yeah, that's going to be the best version you'll ever get. Ever get of it, yeah. I think Disney's still debating on whether they want to upload it to uh, Disney Plus. Well, they made a statement about it maybe a few years ago. They're already altering their versions of their other movies, like Pinocchio. But I have to say this in Disney's defense, they're giving you the option to have both versions, so I think that's cool. You know, one for kids, and then one with a statement that says they were a product of their time. I'm against that, because the movie, you're, you're redirecting the movie when you start re-editing it. You are. It becomes something else, and it's not the original vision for the movie. But I feel if at least they're offering both versions. But at if, least. At least they're doing that, because some it's people... better than not having anything. That's right, you can have, you know... George Lucas' Still version of Star Wars, yeah. and that's it. But yeah. but we'll get to that, too. So we have some less famous ones, but movies nevertheless. This is uh, Looking for Mr. Goodbar. This is starring Diane Keaton, and a very, very young, and I think his first real acting role here of Richard Gere. I think it's based on a book. It was sort of a uh, 70s kind of, you know, woman movie kind of thing, but uh, more of a thriller. It's kind of dark. About a school teacher, she basically, she goes to bars and looking for guys and unfortunately she finds the wrong one. This is not available. Um, it's a Paramount title, you know, with Paramount Plus and stuff. I, we're hoping we're going to get them, and especially with all these new Blu-rays they've been releasing, which are really good. I don't know if you've seen any of them. Um, hopefully that'll be on their list. Regardless if the movie is great or not, it should really be out. So that's another one. Um, let's see what else we got here. This one is called The Keep. This is a Michael Mann film. This one should be released, and it seems like anybody who ever worked on it kind of acts like they never heard of the movie. <laughs> Music by Tangerine Dream. Paul said something about that possibly yeah, I reason. Was, I, was, I wasn't even sure if this was, you know, actually out of print, and I just had to confirm it for myself, but it is out of print, and it seems like the issue is the soundtrack. I think there is an official release overseas, but at least in the United States, it's still not available, and this is the only official way to get it here unless you import it. First of all, I'm sure there's Beatles fans out there, and everybody knows that we just got, thank God, the uh, Letter B, was it nine hour documentary? Peter Jackson. Peter right? Jackson's, yeah, I love it. But what I really like, though, is I'd like to have every version of something. And the original release was this Let It Be, directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg. Uh, unfortunately, that's not available. And it's, I should say, it's a magnetic video, the first Hollywood um, video cassette label as well as Laserdisc, so. That's worth noting. Yes, and uh, it's really a nice title. Even um, the videotape for that was uh, or is still super rare and desirable. Yeah, and this this one is super clean. I mean, um, it's not widescreen or anything, but um, it my trans my copy is 
really nice and even the disc itself I'll show if anybody's interested in something like that it's super clean you know um, I'm gonna scratch it now no. <laughs> but uh, that's a good one another one that if you're a Beatles fan um, is something called the Beatles complete which was out on VHS on Laserdisc there's two versions of this there's the regular version and a newly remastered version this was basically the Beatles version of the anthology before the anthology this was what the long and winding road was supposed to be and then uh, and I'm sure I got that a little wrong but um, but this is a nice documentary too and this is not available you know you would think it would be with all the Beatles completists on DVD or blu-ray but here it is and there's the back not that you can see much of it but it's actually a nice uh, I might be sound a little ignorant what exactly is it just music it's videos just, it's and... a, no it's more of a documentary about okay. the Beatles life um, they do have music in it obviously um, but it's just kind of like, you know, how they started. It was the original documentary, and if a little side note, it's narrated by Malcolm McDowell. So that's kind of cool, you know, a little Clockwork Orange reference yep. there. Um, now, what I am going to mention here is very personal to me, very important to me. Um, we just got on Paramount Plus the uh, director's version of Star Trek The Motion Picture. Um, Darren Dockman did a fantastic job, uh, but there was, was other versions of this out there. This is Star Trek, the motion picture special longer version. This was the version that they used on television, the, the ABC cut, it's also known as. So this was a bunch of footage, but they really didn't take a lot of care. They just looked to see whatever footage they had laying around and to extend the movie so they could have a nice runtime for like a three hour event or whatever. But in any case, I really like to have every version of every movie. And there is some cool stuff in here that uh, still is kind of cool to me that you know deleted scenes that you grew up watching this thing on television over and over again over your copy VHS tape not available on DVD not available on blu-ray um, is on VHS tape and laserdisc so um, if you're a Star Trek fan such a motion picture it's nice to have um, I would tell everybody to give the Star Trek director's cut a chance uh, it might change your look on this movie because it's really good my favorite Star Trek movie not the best Star Trek movie but my favorite Star Trek movie they just announced that Cameron's finally working on this, True Lies. I have the widescreen and the pan and scan. The reason why I do is because he uses a removable mat. So even though this is in widescreen, how it's shown theatrically, you'll actually see some more of the image on the top and the bottom on the pan and scan. So that's coming. So what was the story behind why they put these off for so long? Well, we don't really know. Um, Cameron, you know, this is 20th Century Fox. Uh, I'll be honest with you, with um, Disney buying Fox, I thought we weren't going to see this or another one. The Abyss. And in the Abyss here I have the widescreen extended edition. Nice gatefold. And then I also have the Abyss, the widescreen letterbox version, but this was the big collector's one. This is a CAV. And then I have the pan and scan for the same reason, that you actually see more on the disc. So, um, why? We can't tell you. You would think it would be a no-brainer that these movies would be released, especially with somebody whether you like Cameron or not, with a powerhouse like Cameron behind it, you'd think these things would have got out. It's not like he's embarrassed of the movies or anything, so don't know why. Um, Anybody who's a user on the Blu-ray.com uh, forums knows how requested these movies are. Yeah. It's almost become like a joke. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually want to see the director's cut of uh, Piranha 2 Disappointing, but that's just me. <laughs> um, that is available, by the way, as a Japanese import on Laserdisc, but not on any other format. So if you even like Disappointing... Uh, that's the only way to get Cameron's official version of it. Of course, this is another one that's obvious. The Star Wars, the original cuts of Star Wars. Other than, I think I think this version says A New Hope in the beginning of it. But other than that, these are the original ways that we grew up with them. This is the Star Wars... Well, uh, we did get those, what, gout versions. Yeah, but that, that, that was... Yeah, those were edited. I think they edited the opening to put the not Star Wars... Not but the episodes? Yeah, or? not to put the episode and the new okay. hope at the top. But these, I think, say it. Which is fine, because the other ones do, too, so it's kind of cool. But, you know, the old hand not shooting, um, hand shooting first, no Jabba scenes, those kind of things. Those are all in here. In glorious widescreen and nice transfers. They were available. One of the first ones that came out, that I bought, anyway, of on um, widescreen, on the 20th Century Fox ones. But some of them suffer some things. Like, Star Wars actually shrinks... Not really that noticeable, but it's noticeable. Star Wars, the aspect ratio shrinks as you're watching it, so that's kind of weird. Hmm. These don't have that problem, from what I'm told, and the, there is no laser rod on it. And it's a great set. You know, there's a lot of 
behind the scenes stuff that's still not on anything else. So there's a couple of bit like audio comment. I don't want to say a commentary, but specific for the scenes um, from George Lucas, from um, uh, Carrie Fisher, from Mark Hamill, from Ivan Kirshner. So it's kind of cool. So you get those as well. And there's a bunch of like other making of things on there, like little supplementals or. So it's a good pickup, if you, and you can probably get them cheap because they made four billion of these damn things. So <laughs> they're out there, you know. Uh, that's a nice set. And then another one, kind of cool, because we get we just got the 50th anniversary of. This is the Godfather trilogy, which I still call the Godfather epic, because that's how I saw it on TV. This is the television edit of one, two, and then they added the third one um, in chronological order. So, as it says here, 1901 to 1980, um, there's no flashbacks like there were in two. It's basically one long movie. So, if you have some time and you make some pasta and it's a Sunday, it's a good nine-hour adventure, maybe even longer. Um, but it's it's got footage in here, about an hour extra footage, maybe even a little longer. There's a whole scene with Jenko, the um, concierge where they watch him die and there's a whole bunch of stuff I don't want to give nothing away so if you ever get a chance to see a copy of this they did show this on HBO I think once or maybe twice and that was it so there are copies of this out there but nothing official how rare is this set? well this one here is numbered and it's also signed it so doesn't say how many doesn't say how many 10, was made 000, but probably like probably, 10 or 15 well, probably even more than that but you know it is, it's still nice you know and it has his kind of signature on it so it's kind of cool but he kind of pretty much disowned this. Um, it comes with a nice, nice book, you know, a little information about the Godfather. Because he always says the original versions you saw was his intention, except, I guess, with the third one, which Coda. So, um, but it's really nice to have. And sometimes you just, you want to watch this. Sometimes you just want to watch Godfather 2. But sometimes you want to see everything. So it's kind of nice. Um, I'm not a hater on 3 like a lot of people. I, I don't think it's the best of them, but I don't hate them, you know, so I have that as well. And a um, couple other, you know, noting things here. Um, sometimes the audio on a lot of the discs are different than what they are available on the Blu-ray or the DVD. Uh, a couple examples I have is the audio on the Apocalypse Now, even with the new Blu-ray that came out, the final cut, I think is better on this version. This is my sealed copy. Um, this is the THX Remastered. This sounds phenomenal. This will blow the doors off when the helicopters uh, with the flight of the Valkyries. It's just amazing. So nice. So true to the original feel of the movie. Fantastic transfer. Best best transfer on, you know, 480, I guess you would say. It's not really true 480, but yeah, that's, that's a great, great thing. And um, another one is the THX version. Not the special edition, not anything. This is just the regular... THX version widescreen that was done sometime, I guess, in the 90s. Um, the audio on here is totally different. It's not available. This audio transfer has different dialogues, different takes that are not available on any of the Blu-rays, the DVDs, and those sets are incredible. But for some reason, this audio is not there. Right here on the back it reads, the six-track magnetic sound master used in the original 70 millimeter theatrical prints were utilized to create the soundtracks for this widescreen Laserdisc release of Alien. Supervised by Lucasfilm THX Laserdisc program and encoded with Dolby Surround AC3 digital sound, Ridley Scott's legendary science fiction masterpiece is now presented as close to the original theatrical experience as possible. So, um, if you're a crazy person about Alien like I am, I gotta have every version of everything. Um, the AC3 five, uh, Dolby Digital soundtrack on here is amazing. Um, when that scene, when they first get off the ship and you hear the wind and everything, it'll blow you, blow you right out the room. It's 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 amazing. So uh, thank you, Ridley Scott, for that. But this is good. I don't know how they got a copy of this. I don't know how this trans this audio got to them, but nobody's ever corrected it. But if you look online, you'll see that there's a lot of talk about this one. So um, I think as far as now, that's. That's just kind of like the best of. There are other titles, even ones that we could talk about, but um, you know, some other mentioned ones is like some TV shows that are not available anywhere else. There's a TV show called Working Skips, Stiffs. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, that has um, Michael Keaton and Jim Belushi. Um, not a great show, but funny. It shows how funny Michael mm -hmm. Keaton was with Jim Belushi. Um, that was done through like the same time of like Happy Days and everything. And I think I have two volumes of that. Um, also, too, if you're a Battlestar Galactica fan, if people remember, they had movies in the theater of Battlestar Galactica or TV movies 
Some of them they showed like movies of the week. Right. Um, so I have a couple of those on Laserdisc. And, of course, there's Looney Tunes. They're not all available. And a lot of them, and I'm not even talking about the ones that are blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Just in general, they're not all available. So a lot of them are available on Laserdisc. And you could probably piece together all of them on Laserdisc. So uh, it's kind of cool that way, you know. Especially that Volume 5 is very rare. So if you are going to look to do that, you better keep some money for that one. Because they didn't make too many of them. But. All right, well, thanks, Steve. This has been fun. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if we ever plan to do more, or if I ever plan to do more laser videos, I'll probably have Steve do them because he's the expert. Like I said, no. I only own one laser disc for Sleepaway Camp 3, of course. <laughs> but uh, this has been Paul and Steve uh, with VHSCollector.com. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. If you really enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about the home video industry, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think or if there's any other video ideas that you have, and hopefully I can do it. Have a good night, guys. Thanks again.